Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I want to talk a little bit about No Man's Sky and what I think could possibly be inside of the update alongside the Omega Expedition, which might be named something else rather curiously. Anyway, let's jump on over and let's see what I've got for you guys out in the viewer, shall we? So here we go. Firstly, I'm over on Sean Murray Watch. Over on Twitter, so yes, Mr. Murray of the Sean Variety has posted out three of the Omega images, or emojis, or symbols, whatever you want to call these things, and that was on the 10th of Feb. Now, my thoughts and feelings on this is maybe there's three more sleeps left to go. I guess, quite a few likes on that one. 48 of them, in fact, which is lovely jubbly. Yeah, not as much as good old Ray Reynolds. I do love Ray Reynolds over on Twitter. If you don't follow Ray Reynolds on Twitter, you're missing out, because he always posts awesome stuff. Go check on it out. Good old Ray Reynolds over on the Twitterverse. Anyway, yes, I think three more sleeps. So I actually thought that they would be releasing this on the Wednesday, which is Valentine's Day. Which probably isn't the most romantic of things to do, to be honest, is it? So maybe they are going to push to try and get this out to people on the Tuesday. So there we go, people. I'm thinking the Tuesday, Wednesday. But I'm thinking because of this three emojis in a row, I think that means three more days until it comes. So I actually think it's Tuesday. I think it's going to happen Tuesday. Let's see if that's right. Heck yes. Cool, yeah, it might mean three weeks, though. But shh, don't say nothing about that. I change my I change, I change my whole speculation if it doesn't drop on Tuesday, right, guys? <laughs> I mean, that's all it is. It's a guesstimate. I mean, your guess is as good as mine when it comes to why has Sean put three of them out there. I think it's three days. Okay, <laughs> it could be three weeks though, because the sales haven't started, have they? There's no sales across platforms like we normally see. But yeah, <laughs> there we are. Anyways, Sean also posted out about a four-part arc. Now, Singularity was part two, as it says there. OK, so when you jump on over to Echoes, Echoes was furthering the narrative, introduced in Interceptor. Interceptor was part one, Singularity part two, and part three was Echoes. So part four could be inside of this next update that's coming out. Now, a lot of people are saying that Omega also means the last and the greatest. Well, maybe this is going to be the last and the greatest part of the four-part ARG. A lot of other people are saying that maybe it means it's the end of expeditions in a seasonal format. Or maybe it's the end of expeditions altogether, now that we have the ability to rerun expeditions inside of the game at the little console next to Johnny Five's kiosk that sells all the Quicksilver stuff, the Quicksilver Synthesis Companion, to run expeditions whenever we like. So that could be a thing. So there's a lot of things going on. Why has Sean chose Omega as a name for the expedition? But you've got to remember, this expedition, Omega, inside the patch notes, was just a version. Now, people that have done deep dives into the game files say that the real name for the expedition is Starseed. So it could just be Omega is maybe the last time they're going to test something out in the experimental branch in the way they have. But we... <laughs> Well, we should see. I'd imagine it's going to be one of the first times that they're going to do this sort of stuff. Anyway, jumping over onto my community tab, people, starting from around two days ago, I was putting out a lot of the expedition sort of path and my playthroughs of it. But at the same time, I've been asking the community how they feel about the expedition coming out on Experimental Branch on the PC first. Yep. And what they think of what they've seen so far from the other community content creators. Now, funny enough, 62% of people says that they're avoiding it until it comes to all platforms. So I know that 62% of my normal audience probably aren't enjoying me doing the playthrough of this, which got me a little bit worried for, you know, am I actually spoiling it for the actual community? Now, there's two ways of looking at it. It's a very much a double-edged sword, this people inside the viewerverse. It really is. Because on one side... Us testing it early in experimental gets all the bugs squashed before it goes out to the community player base, the rest of the community player base, and then they have a bug free seamless experience. Now, a lot of people say, well, why doesn't Hello Games just do that in house and release it on all platforms all at once? Well, anyway, let's just jump back on over to the poll. So, a lot of people said that they haven't formed an opinion until it's bug free, which is 11% which is fairly high in comparison to the rest of these numbers. 
Then you've also got amazing. It's one of the best so far. Brilliant. Only 1% said that. Now, I would say after fully running this expedition, I've actually done a review now. I've done a review. If you want to see the review in the last part of the expedition, it does contain spoilers, but we don't know if it contains spoilers because Hello Game says this is a version of not the exact thing that you're going to see at launch. I can't imagine the rewards changing all that much, though. So, yeah, there are spoilers. Anyway, if you want to see the review, I'll put a link up there. If you just want to know what I scored it, I gave it a flat 8 right now. A flat 8 out of 10. I said it was probably my top 5 favourite expeditions. But considering that there's only 12 expeditions out there, including this one, that's just around about average. So, yeah, make of that what you will. Um, the thing that I didn't like too much is... Each of the actual steps in this one, each of the badges, each of the missions that you got to do, each of the objectives have been in other expeditions. There wasn't any real new ones there. The only reason I liked it so much is because of the amount of lore that was in it, which I don't, I really want to give spoilers unless you watch my playthrough, which I talk about all the lore in that. Or the actual rewards. The rewards this time were really freaking good. On par with perhaps one of the first expeditions because the ship is bloody beautiful. And some of the things that you get, freaking great. Anyway, so yeah, good rewards, good bit of lore, pretty good. 11%, I guess. Rewards look good, expedition steps a bit bland, it's okay, 14%. I kind of hover in between these two, and that's why I gave it an 80% out of 100, you know, or 8 out of 10. Anyways, I've got a whole playlist there, if you want to hit it up, if you do want to go watch it, hit it up. In fact, I put a playlist just up there to save you some time. There you go, chicka-boom, that's how I don't spoil you. Right now, so scrolling up a little bit further... There was a milestone that was broken to fudge. In phase two, when you put a ceiling light on, it caused the actual base building up to that step to go into a perpetual loop and keeps asking you to put down the pieces, but it would just flicker. And you'd get stuck there. There was no way to complete phase two. There was no way to get, I think the phase two reward was perhaps the backpack, maybe, or maybe this it was the backpack or it might have been the face shield, one or the other. But anyway, that completely bugged out, stopped you from getting those things. And, uh, yeah, it stops you from completing the expedition altogether as well, you know. So there we are. Okay, do you think Hello Games should always put updates into the experimental branch first to reduce bugs and errors? Now, considering my previous poll, where people said that they were trying to avoid all of this, it was, uh, it was odd to see the results that we've got here. Because if you add the two yeses together, the 41 and the... F yeah, that's, that's 41 and 29, so say 40 and 30. It's what, 40, 50, 60, 70% of people said yes. Okay, but the, the highest amount, the 40% says, but maybe place an NDA taking part on social posts. So maybe if Hello Games said, if you're on the experimental branch, if you do put out any video, make sure you put spoilers in the title. Or maybe if they said, you're not allowed to actually post on social media any footage or any videos until the official release date. At least then we've, we've still got the head start. We've still got it all saved on our hard drives or even got it on our channels as unlisted or members only or something. Something that's in line with Hello Games has agreed with. But Hello Games did no such thing. So it was a bit of a free fall for everyone. And content creators are going to make content. That's what we do. Content creators make content. And if you've been given something to make new content on, you're not going to pass up that opportunity, are you? So, yeah. Anyway, it's been a bit of a free-for-all for those that could, that have got PCs that are able to play the game. And although my PC is probably not up to spec or up to standard to actually deliver it as well as I can on my PlayStation 5, it still gave me a bit of a head start on content. So, But what it did do is I reported that bug in Phase 2 straight to the Zendesk. I even hit on up my contacts at, at Hello Games and said, here you go, look, I've just found this, blah 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 And it got squashed within 24 hours. So... It has got its positives. It has got its negatives as well. I mean, I can see if if I didn't have a PC able to play this, and if I only had my console and I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs, I mean, I could have carried on playing Power, Power World and I could have just ignored all the content coming out, which a lot of people says, yes, makes sense. And I can just not watch any spoilers, 29%. You know, at the end of the day, we're all adults. We can all make the choice. Do I watch this or don't I? You know, and a lot of people have said that inside of the comments, if I go into the comments, there's a few people who say, well, what I didn't like is people using actual rewards inside of their thumbnails and ruining it for people. And so seeing the actual rewards, you know. And I suppose they've got a point on that sort of thing because it just pops up in your feed. You can't help but see that, you know, and then it's seen. You know, ah, 
It's like seeing your Christmas presents early or something, isn't it? You know, so I do see where people are coming from and I do understand the community gripes with this. But at the same time, when you guys pick this up on release, hopefully it's going to be bug free. If it's not bug free, then I'd say this was a completely pointless exercise. Maybe this was just an experimental exercise for the experimental branch, because I honestly think that Hello Games would like to use the experimental branch more for Light No Fire in future. And this is just a testing bed to see how the community takes to it, whether they warm to it or not, is my feeling on that, people. I mean, Light No Fire is vastly ambitious when it comes to bringing players together on a community planet building lots of community bases i think they're going to do a lot of tests and experimental experimental branch that's my gut feeling and i think this was a test for that that's that's where i'm going with it anyway people going up a little bit further people struggle to find star silk i've got a whole video on how to find star silk but to find star silk the easiest way to do it get yourself an economy scanner set the filter to economy choose a green star system and then on the green star systems you're looking for a little stopwatch icon and it either needs to say mercantile or shipping and it needs to be an economy level of two or three not a star of one and hopefully when you go there you'll be able to buy some star silk anyway there's a whole video on how to do that and how to get and make a spinning jam lovely jubbly video hit that up if you if you're struggling to follow what i just said there and that video makes it clear with images from video format you know that's what videos are <laughs> Coolio, for those on pc and steam that want a guide to get into experimental branch see the version of the expedition so yes if you are on pc and you do use steam to play no man's sky you right now could jump into omega you could be doing all this wondrous stuff and playing the expedition early picking up all the actual trinkets and all that sort of shenanigans right now and the steps are really easy you can follow that video right there and that will get you into it people now, to get to all this, you just go to my channel on YouTube and you go to the community tab. It's all there. All right, all right. Scrolling up a bit further. Then I went out to um, a Valentine's bash. I couldn't do the weekend mission. There's my Valentine's bash that we went to. We actually won. Yeah, that's a bit of a spoiler alert. But yeah, we actually won best couple of the evening and we run something in the raffle. Jump on over. There's a brilliant band in there as well. Okay. Do you think, with the Sean Murray emoji post of the Omega, that this update is just the ex expedition or the ability to rerun old expeditions, or will there be more than that? A lot of people said way more. New stations override ship racing and more. 23% said that. Pretty cool. A bit more. New stations at least. Perhaps more lore. 35% of people. Okay. So yeah, a little bit more. Okay, cool. Exactly that. Because Hello Games have said we're only going to show what we've done. And in the trailers, that's all they showed. But they didn't show the ability to rerun expeditions any time we want, did they? So, and we know that now, now that we can get into the Omega. Uh, so, yeah. You know, and we can also own our private freighters now. That's something I've recently done in a video. It should be live by now. You can hit that one up. 21%. Not sure. Just want to see the poll results. 16%. And then... 5% said a lot. there's a lot to come this year. Data miners have found all sorts, and they have. There's quite a lot that's been found inside the game files, including modular ship parts. But I've had a few people hit me up and said, those ship parts have been there for freaking years, Captain. I don't think modular ships are coming into the game. So the whole video that you sort of quoted on and linked out there might not be true. But we will see. We'll see what the actual future holds on that. I've done the older mega update mega big update this video's had quite a lot of views 3.1k views if you're amongst those viewers thank you very much for viewing that video i guess it's doing rather well that one and it just is my whole overview so if you're liking this video you're gonna love that one go hit that one up i guess and my memberships i've got 106 members so thank you very much everybody that's chose to back my channel through channel membership you keep my channel alive because ad revenue it depends on CPM and click rate, but with memberships, that's a guaranteed income that happens every month without fail, as long as you keep your membership there. And it keeps the channel afloat. It pays for new mics. It pays for a new camera. It's going to slowly build me a decent PC over the year, maybe, maybe early next year. It's going to take a while, that one, because we all know how much freaking PCs cost these days. But once I do get a decent PC, I'll be able to take my channel to that next level. If you want to help speed that process up and you've got the means to, I do have a PayPal link and you can always put PC fund, Captain. There you go. Boom. 
Heck yes, and um, I'm probably going to do a vlog of the PC build, me getting the case, getting the motherboard and slowly building it, alongside maybe my stepson. He builds PCs, so yeah, hopefully it could be a little bonding experience. But anyway, here we go. This is where things start getting really juicy. So this whole Omega being the last idea, or electrical resistance, both might have some meaning, but I think it's to do with the law. When you're looking for a fuel source before you warp and find the space anomaly, you ask some questions at a monolith. One is, are you the first? Are you the last? I think the Atlas might be the first and the Void Mother might be the last. So maybe, as we call the Atlas, Atlas stations and whatever, calling them Void Mother stations, if we can ever visit the Void Mother, doesn't sound all that great. And also, it's the only time that a gender appears in game is her or she. If they could just call her the Omega, as we call the Atlas the Atlas, it takes away that ambiguity. And also, I think it sounds a lot better visiting an Omega station than visiting the Void Mother station. And that's what I pointed out just there. That's my current theory. And if it is the end of anything, maybe it's the end of the four-part story arc, which we just mentioned earlier on. Or at worst, the last expedition that's seasonal. Now, until now, we've been having four expeditions per year. Last year, the 12th expedition didn't drop. It's due to drop now. The Omega expedition, or Star Seeds expedition, as some people have found in the game files, is going to be the Expedition 12. So it's already not seasonal. But maybe Hello Games inside of the patch notes will say this is the last of the expeditions. You now have the ability to rerun expeditions anytime you want from this console. We may introduce new expeditions once a year, but they're no longer going to be seasonal. That's kind of what I think it might mean when they call it the Omega. Maybe. I don't think it's the end of No Man's Sky. Some people are diving right in saying it could be the end of No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is coming to an end because of light, no fire. I think that could be on the table, but probably maybe in four years time or something like that, like uh, 2026 or something at the earliest, because I think they're going to have to run No Man's Sky in tandem with Light No Fire to see whether there's actual interest for Light No Fire. I mean, it looks fantastic, but what's the game objective? What's going to hold players in there? Is it going to be as attractive as No Man's Sky? And No Man's Sky is sci-fi, that's clearly fantasy. They're not in com competition with each other. They could lift and shift things from Light No Fire into, into No Man's Sky and vice versa. I mean, the way that we've seen the mounts take off in freaking Light No Fire is a copy and paste job from how ships take off in No Man's Sky. I'm fairly sure, since it's the same engine, we can share the world, we can share the updates in a roundabout way things can translate over. So here's a little snippet of that lore when you're looking for actual fuel. You get asked a few things. Is it Traveller? Is it Friend? Is it First? Is it Last? Has it seen the Crimson Eye? Has the Crimson Eye seen it? And then it says, come and find us. Find us amongst the stars or whatever. I think this is a message from Polo and Nada. But it's just interesting that they ask, are you first or are you last? Now, there is the first of the travellers. And we know that Null, Apollo, Artemis, Asteria, Hildebrand, Narcissus, they were all part of the first travellers to go out there. There's probably one or two that I've missed, to be honest. But then you're being asked, are you the first or last? Was you the first, one of that bunch? Well, we all know that we share the same iteration in a roundabout way. We're copies of the creator. So first and last, we kind of are. It's almost like inside of the biblical text where Jesus is called the first and last and the ever living or, or God or whatever. I do know that Hello Games likes to do nods to biblical type references or Greek mythology or other sorts of religious texts to bring it into, give it that spiritual sort of overtone to the actual lore. Oh, hold on, there's somebody at my door, people. Dang it, people. So far, I've managed to call that all in one piece. Now I'm going to have to join it together, edit it and all that sort of shenanigans. Dang it! That means I've got to process the video. It's going to take me a few more hours. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's scroll up a little bit further. Here we are. Here we are. Amazon. Very inconvenient. <laughs> They're very actually convenient, to be fair. Omega has a variety of meanings. It means the last letter in the Greek alphabet. Or ohms as electrical resistance. The word literally means great, Omega. So that's why I've done the, is it going to be a great up, um, update? You know, As opposed to Omicron, which means little. So I honestly think this is going to be a bigger update than what we thought, and that's probably why it's been called Omega. 
and maybe there's going to be a lot bolted onto this that we we're just not expecting maybe this is going to be a surprise update i like to look at things in a half glass full thing i'm very positive when it comes to this sort of stuff and sometimes it gets me into trouble yeah i overhype stuff but i'm an excitable character i'm sorry if that's the case but yeah i i still hope i hope and dream sorry Atlas was one of the first titans and was punished to hold up the heavens and the earth for all eternity. With all this in mind, do you think the Omega has a meaning to the game? And 19% uh, said, no, Fractal didn't. It was just a nice name. <laughs> yeah, when I saw the Fractals update, that's the one that caught me out. Because Fractals, in Fractal Map, everything is different. And they even used a snowflake as the emoji. I thought, ah, oh, we're getting the super formula. We're going to get infinite variety. Yeah, that speculation tripped me over, didn't it? Just a tad. Smash my teeth on the ground with that one. Thank you, yes. Yes, autophages are electrical and we need to resist them. So only 4% think the electrical sort of terminology has got any rhyme or reason to this. And I kind of feel the same way. That one is least likely to me to have any sort of relevance, even though the autophages are quite new. I just don't think that Sean and the team would have put that spin on Omega. I think it's either going to be that it's great or it's going to be the last. And I think the last... Here we go, 51% are more in agreement with this. Void Murrah is the last, aka the Omega. It's a law reference. And I think that's most likely, especially since we know that this is probably four, the four-part arc coming to its conclusion and end as well. I think it's got dual meaning, one to the Void Murrah and one to the end of the actual um, four-part arc. I think if they've gone on lent on that as the reason why they chose Omega as the name, it's actually quite clever. Yes, it means this updation or expedition is the last one. 22% for that. So that's the second highest. So yeah, maybe it is going to be the last of the expeditions in a seasonal sense. Or maybe even the last expedition end of. Now it must take quite a lot of work for Hello Games to do that and to put them into game. And now they've given us the ability to do the reruns any time we like. That means at the end of the year where they would normally do the seasonal redux, we won't have the seasonal redux. Because we can run them any time we freaking want. So what are they going to do over the festive period of 2024? That's looking well into the future. That's future speculation. But for me, I'm wondering whether what they're going to do is release a seasonal end of year expedition over that seasonal period, which is a brand new expedition for everyone. They're just going to do one expedition each year and it's going to be full of awesome stuff. It's going to be an awesome expedition and it's going to give us something to do over that quiet spell where they've downed tools. That's what I think will happen. In my gut feeling, that is, if I was No Man's Sky's developers, if I was at Hello Games, that's what I would look to do and maybe give more player control over stuff and that's why we now can run the expeditions whenever we want which is pretty cool because if you want to run them in like a permadeath save or a survival save i guess you can do that haven't tried it on the experimental pc because i hit up the latest expedition it's got a community event tied into it which is all time gated i can't get out of it even if i friggin wanted to i can't convert my save and what i've been told by people is if you're in an expedition that has that time gate in it and then you try to run another expedition within inside of an expedition it corrupts your save so hello games if you're watching you might want to address that cool no the real update will be star seeds it's a placeholder name only five percent have hit that up so the way that star seeds has come across as being a name is from the data miners they found it inside of the game files but it could be a dead entry it might be that they've now decided to go with omega as the name now we have seen the mention of starborn inside of the actual game files quite a lot because of the starborn runner ship and also there's a starborn runner title i believe but yeah, Starborn and Starseed seems to be something that's being put forwards inside of the game files quite a lot. Now, somebody has put out there into the verse, in fact, a couple of people have picked up on this, especially over on the old Reddit space. And they're wondering whether Starborn is a copyright issue for No Man's Sky. Well, for things to be copyrighted, they have to be trademarked or they have to be copyright protected by the actual franchise that's created that trademark or copyright. You'd normally see TM next to it. It's like, say, like Power World, for example. It is a Pokemon clone, but they haven't used any of the trademarked Pokemon inside of the game. It's like Pikachu is trademarked, Charizard, Bulbasaur, Blastoise. All of those are all trademarked. If you go anywhere close to those, you can get done for it. Yeah. 
Nobody has trademarked the name Starborn. Well, they did some time ago, but that actual trademark has ended freaking time ago. If you just click on the trademarks and go to Starborn, here's the trademark of Starborn. It was cancelled and it got cancelled back in, well, there's the filing date there. Status changed to cancelled under Section 8, and that was back in 2003. No one owns the actual typeset or the title of Starborn. It's not copyrighted. And if you if you just could do a Google search, you can even see Doctor Who has used it in their franchise. And there's been books and there's been short films all called Starborn. I mean, there's a Doctor Who one right there. It, it's not actually protected in any way. And funny enough, you can see there the Omega is actually listed in here as well, which is interesting. But anyway, let's, let's just scroll back up because that is kind of a, a very odd avenue to take things. I think I think No Man's Sky and Hello Games are definitely going to do their due diligence after the problems they had with Sky TV and also the Super Formula. Trust me, they're probably going to do their homework before they start putting things out there that might be trademarked. So I wouldn't worry with what they've done. You know, maybe even, you know, the Outlaws update where we got the new helmet that looked like it was just ripped straight off Kylo Ren's shoulders would be more of a worry. Anyway, let's, <laughs> let's scroll it up. So here you go. Here's my predictions on all the things that I feel are possible to appear inside of the update. I also think there may be more planet surveying added and a link from the planet archives to the stations and there may be to, a way to bring back dead systems and abandoned stations back into working order. You know, like we did last February in the actual update which was what utopia where we worked for the utopia corporation and we had to scan the planets upload them at an archive to bring back a dead system i honestly think that might come into game as a game mechanic the new stations look like break off parts that has gone down to the planet and formed colossal archives when you look at the colossal archives they look like stems off of the stations they honestly do. So I think they're going to share some sort of kingship with those. And in fact, the time-gated missions that I mentioned earlier inside of this latest Omega expedition is scanning planets and doing surveying of key planets. I honestly think that's going to come into game as an actual mechanic. And it's Hello Games just testing to see how much of the community are interested in doing that. Yeah. I might actually do a little live stream of me doing some scanning of the planet to try and finish one of those little community objectives over the week. Anyways, here we are. So I think very likely new stations, because we saw it in the trailer. The Omega Expedition, because it went into Experimental. Run Expeditions anytime. We've seen the console inside of Experimental. It's all there. We know that's very likely. It's pretty much 100% on the cards. A good chance, ship racing, I say that because the actual Starborn runner has got a decal on it of a little geck with a chequered flag and boom, wearing a racing helmet. Whenever we see those little emoji, those, those little um, decals of the geck doing something like wearing a chef helmet or a hat, we got ourselves cooking in there. When we saw it wearing a pair of headphones, we got bike beats, you know, so... It's, we've already seen patterns of this happen before. So I think ship racing is definitely on the cards. Maybe with ship initiators and like checkpoints that you have to fly the ships through. Be freaking awesome. Void Mother Law, because we're getting a lot inside of the expedition, I think if they are to put anything else into game, they're going to continue that with the actual Void Mother Law and also perhaps Void Missions. I say Void Missions because we've got that autophage guy that we've been building, Man Spider, inside of the actual Nexus, or the Space Anomaly, up by Tephus, and he does nothing right now. Now, I'm thinking he's going to send us out to go and get Void Echoes to help his race along or something. And maybe it's going to be a raid system or a guild system or, or something. A bit like Destiny, where you go get Ingrams and take them back to him and he decrypts them and you get some sort of random thing. Maybe that's going to populate new areas of wonders in our catalogue. I don't know, but we'll see. Possible modular races. So, yeah, maybe we get to build our own racing ships out of maybe fighter parts and put new wings on the side, a little bit like the... Um, the runner ship maybe you put those side rails on those engines onto a sh uh, onto a, a a fighter nose so we've got this frankenstein fighter racer ship new ways to run missions mentioned that with the whole void guy but maybe there might be an overhaul to the way we do quicksilver missions considering that johnny five in the quicksilver store has lost its progress bar at the top i'm wondering if they're rethinking about the weekend missions and the missions in general 
and maybe looking at how they can make them either more sh Nintendo Switch compliant because they haven't got multiplayer or whether they can make actual different ones for Switch and different ones for us so where they are multiplayer. I don't know. New Wonders for the Wonders catalogue, because at the moment it only goes up to 38. However, it says 38 out of 70 something, and we can't unlock the rest. So it looks like there's half of it still behind a locked wall or something. Maybe they're going to stick those in as the Wonders. I'm wondering whether it's going to be tied into maybe going into the realm of the Void or the realm of Glass. But I put not yet, Summer Lore as a story. So where um, Ariadne went missing inside of the story lore, and the Summer story lore from about two years ago, that hasn't been actualised into the game. So all those names I mentioned earlier, like Hildebrand, Narcissus, Astera, you probably have no idea what the fudge I'm on about if you're a new player. And they were all inside of the Summer lore. All these new entities got a mention, got a little bit of a nod, especially Astera. She played quite a key, key person in that, almost as high up as Null inside of lore that's current. So having that put into game would make that official and make it canon. Right now it feels quite loosely connected to No Man's Sky because it hasn't been fully vetted in, I guess. I don't know. Full ship customization. I would like to hope that it's going to be on the cards, mainly because Hello Games say they always listen to their community. Now, every single update for the last year or so, people have been banging that drum saying ship customization, ship customization, ship customization. I've also put on Megafauna Planets, and the reason I did that is when you encounter your first living Leviathan frigate in space, it asks you three questions. What would you rather see? Megafauna planets, idiom veined mountains, or cities? Okay, I hit megafauna planets. I want to be able to go and find megafauna, hunt megafauna, destroy megafaunas, and have their skulls adorned on my walls. Yes. <laughs> like space for safari. That'd be freaking awesome. I don't know where it's going to happen. That's probably not what they meant by megafauna planets, but it's what happened in my head. But yeah, it'd be nice if we could just do battle with the giant sandworms that jump out of the ground, wouldn't it, you know? That'd be nice as a first step, and then introduce more giant legendary fauna, that'd be freaking great. Outside chance, a way to enter the void. Boundary failures become active, maybe take you into the realm of glass. So I'm th I honestly do think the realm of glass and the void are two separate places. I think the realm of glass is where the sentinels reside and come from, whereas the void is more sort of an organic sort of matter place. And that's where our living ships came from. That's where these living leviathans came from. They came from the void. And so do those little green critters that you see by abandoned buildings and all that pus and that ooze. And I honestly think that the um, the realm of glass is like a firewall that sits between those, and that's where the actual sentinels reside to try and stop the void from creeping in. And you almost see the void as a virus. It's like the freaking worms. They could be a worm virus, you know what I mean? Anyway, yeah, original planet styles as well. So back in the vanilla days, we had some very cool ground textures like swirls and odd patterns. We had some very cool vibrant colours as well and starlings to things. I'm thinking if we do go into the void, perhaps those void planets, as well as having gnarly sort of pus and ooze on them, could have that original planet style and maybe even bring in some of the styles even prior to that, like, say, Araya V. Maybe one I might even see those majestic diplos one day or even the sandworms that go across the ground that kill you in one hit. Like Sean Murray was saying, it's, it's not a good way to die. I'd rather that than be hit by a meteorite or picked up by a tornado and slammed against the freaking rocks, which has happened to me a few times. I'd much rather say, yeah, a giant sandworm killed me rather than wind did it. Anyway, maybe never, super formulas, better settlements and multiplayer for Switch. Mainly because I think if those three things were ever going to happen, they would have happened already. Um, being that they haven't, it kind of feels like maybe they're never going to happen. They're still, they still sit in the pit of my stomach. They've still got a little special place that says, yes, please happen, please. But um, uh, even though they listen to the community, we've been shouting for these things from the top of our lungs. Since it came to Switch, they've been asking for multiplayer. And since it came to Switch, they've also been asking for better settlements. But even us, we would like better settlements because right now you don't feel like an overseer. You've got no kinship, no relationship to any of your settlers. Why are you called an overseer? Well, you don't even know who they freaking are. And you go talk to them. They don't give you any missions. They don't do anything. They just walk around aimlessly like little zombies. 
And even only an assessment only gives you two different commodities. You've got no choice over it. It's a completely random numbers game. And you, you get it all the way up to an S class. You wake up the next day, log in, go to it, and it's back to being a C class. It seems to fluctuate on class whenever it freaking feels like it. It seems to be every time there's a Sentinel sort of attack, it goes back to being a C class. It's bizarre. I don't know whether that's by design or what, but it just feels janky and broken as fudge. Oh, and if you talk to the market vendor from behind his kiosk on the settlement, it hangs your game. You have to force quit. Yeah, that's been fixed twice and broken again twice. Don't know why. Anyway, so there you go. That's the thing that I think will maybe, maybe never happen anyway. Those three things. I'm hoping that 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 they do get addressed this year, but um, you know, year on year, I wish for the same things and that doesn't happen. So there we go, people. That's my little table. Have you got your own table of things that you think will be inside of this update? Let us know in the comments. Sound off or even put comments on theirs. Who cares? Here you go. I'll hit comments and we'll see if anybody's put a comment on. Oh, look, we've got some comments. Looks relatively realistic. However, if I remember correctly, there was there was always base power generations parts data mined a few years back like wind turbines perhaps the mega system could be uh, hinting at those perpetual power supplies okay maybe maybe okay what's the summer law story were those weekend missions leading up to the origins update also switches most definitely never get in multiplayer maybe the next console will support it but definitely not the current one the void mother arc lore is almost guaranteed even if it's a very small amount of it well there you go this person doesn't even know about the weekend summer story lore and it was freaking awesome i might have to reply to him and, and drop in the older uh, you know, the whole playlist that i've got on my channel yeah, je comprendes pas anglais terpoitois. Well, I don't understand French all that much, mate. But yeah, he doesn't understand English. Only a little. He's, yeah, puis is little. So yeah, he only understands a little English. Well, sorry, mate. I, I don't speak French. And this is an English-speaking channel. You may have noticed I've got the Queen's English, mate. I drink tea, my dear. Heck yes. So yeah, I'll reply to this one in a bit. I'm not going to hit the thumbs up or the heart, or else I might lose it along amongst a plethora of things. I'll find that later, and I'll reply to that with the playlist. So thank you very much, those that left a comment. And if you feel that this has got a chance to come in, come and sound off, let us know. And if you feel that I've missed something, again, come on in, let us know. Might do a follow-up video, but I don't know whether I'm going to have time in between now and Tuesday. I honestly think this is going to drop on Tuesday, people. Um, but if it don't, maybe on Wednesday. But it could be that those free Omega signs means three weeks so they can get the sales in. I haven't checked to see if the sales are available as yet. I'll go check. Okay, chums. Well, No Man's Sky over on Steam is still full price. 49 and 99 English pounds. And over on the Nintendo of the Switch, it's 39.99 of English pounds. And on Xbox, it's also 39.99. But you can get it on, on Game Pass, which is lovely. And over on PSN, it's 39.99 as well. So none of the sales have actually started as yet, people. Now, there could be a reason for that inside of the viewerverse. I am wondering whether the reason that we're not seeing it on sale is perhaps maybe this is going to be a, vi a bigger update than what we understand it to be. And maybe it's going to be worth full price. Maybe people will be more inclined to pay full price if this is a larger update. Now, some people out there have said maybe it's called a mega because they're going to do a mega update. But to do that, they're going to have to do a full on system restart. That's why we haven't seen multiplayer fix. That's why we're seeing weirdness with bases. And that's why we've seen a lot of multiplayer jank over the years. And that's maybe why they haven't addressed the super formula as yet. Maybe that's why they haven't brought multiplayer to Switch yet, because they're going to do a full game overhaul. And maybe this year, after announcing Light No Fire is the year that they're going to do it. And the Omega update is going to be a mega great update. And it's going to change everything. How would you feel about that, people? If they did add in the Super Formula, if they did add in multiplayer to Switch, all those things that I said would never happen and did overhaul the frickin' settlements, would it be worth a system update? Like a full-on system restart? If you did lose your bases, but you can visit your base computer and restore maybe the last 10 bases you made or something from a favourites list that they've compiled... Would you be happy with that? Or maybe it adds every single base you've made as a library and you can redeploy them out on planets where they best suit. 
would you be happy with a full-on system reset, a whole galaxy universe reset, if it gave those things? It's a question I've asked ask myself. It's kept me awake at night. A bit like winning the lottery. What would I do if I won the lottery? Yes, those are the things that you don't want to enter into your brain just before you go to sleep. And trust me, it keeps you awake all freaking night. Yeah, I, you know what? I'd be quite happy with that. If there was a full-on system restart, they rebalanced everything, rejigged everything. But on the other hand, they gave us so much more in return, like the Super Formula, like Infinite Variety, better settlements, maybe even little mini cities and things like that, rebalanced everything, redone all the optimization, and made No Man's Sky just a more seamless experience when it came to multiplayer. 100% yes. Give me that system reset right now. My guess, people. There we are. That's probably given you a lot of food for thought. And I don't want to overhype all this sort of update. It could just be that we're going to get the expedition, the ability to rerun expeditions at any time we wish, and also the, the station cosmetic overhaul. Look and feel to the inside and outside. That could be that's all on the cards. And also along with it, the ability to own our own pirate freighter. So those four things together, that's about on par with what we've seen previous February updates. That's where you should be setting your expectations. That's where I'm setting my expectations. If there's any more than that on top, it's a bonus. If we do get ship racing, if we do get some of this lovely, lovely stuff that I've mentioned, it's a bonus. OK, um, don't set your sights on. Ah, oh, it hasn't got ship racing. I'm disappointed now. Dang that Captain Steve's for raising my hopes. The only reason I'm saying that we might have ship racing is because the new ship has got a decal on it with a geck, with a, a checkered flag behind him wearing a racing hat. And it just so happens that the the, the, the uh, neutral processor has got a little chef one and the bite beat has got one with him wearing headphones. So it kind of feels that they're functional type things. If you see one of those, it means a new function's coming. That's all I've based that on. And also, when you zoom in onside the trailer, over to the right-hand side of the station, it looks like some checkered flags above a door. So it almost looks like there might be racing involved. However, if you look at the current kiosk inside of the stations where you go get all your Exocraft modules from, there's actually two flags on that. So it could just be that's where you get your exo, the Exocraft bits from. Yeah. Who freaking knows until the update drops. That's the fun thing about speculation. Speculation is just ideas in someone's head. It's just thoughts and opinions that are based on things and observations. Some people, they might speculate and just grab things out of thin air. On this channel, I try my best to get things that I've seen inside of the game to speculate on. And I usually give some sort of narrative behind where my thoughts have originated from and give rhyme or reason to them. You know, there's been other game franchises that I have been interested in where speculation can run rife. And yes, I have seen it destroy other games. And I, I don't want to do that here or over on the No Man's Sky community. And by and large, touch wood, pretty much every content creator out there inside of the No Man's Sky community don't go off the rails on the old speculation. Everything is kept in the realms of possibility when it comes to this game. Maybe we're just lucky. There's infinite variety and in, well, infinite possibility. Not variety. Infinite possibility with No Man's Sky, isn't there? I mean, it's a procedural universe that has all this oodles of potential. It's got infinite potential. That's what I should have said, people. Anyway, until next time, salute to Mondo. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.